Alrighty, so here we've got two lines with infinite solutions. And what does infinite solutions mean here? Well, first of all, if they're lines, there's three ways that two lines can interact with one another. They can hit each other once, they can hit each other never, or they can hit each other always. Like in other words, if they actually are the same equation as one another, they'll always be in contact. So this is the idea of having one solution, zero solutions, and infinite solutions. So for this system of equations, we're being told that it has infinite solutions. So they're actually the same line as each other. That means that if they're both in y equals mx plus b, this 3a is equivalent to this 4. And this 2 is equivalent, this 2b is equivalent to the 5. So we can just solve for the variables by saying 3a equals 4 and find a that way. Or we could have said 2b equals 5 if we needed b and b would be equal to 5 over 2. So that's the idea of the infinite solutions. Here, we're being told there are no solutions. So no solutions means that my two lines, if they went on infinitely, they'd never hit each other. And so what does that mean? That means they have different y-intercepts, so different b's, and they have the same slope, the same m's. So we can arrange these both into y equals mx plus b and just go ahead and, and demonstrate that. So for the first one, I can take away AX from both sides. Take uh, divide by negative four. And okay, doing it for the other one now, you got negative two Y, take away eight X from both sides. Divide by negative two. And so now we've got the equations of the two lines. Now we said for there to be no solutions, the slopes have to be the same. So a over four has to be equal to four. A over four equals four, which means that a is 16. And for the y-intercepts to be different, I simply know that minus three over two times c cannot be equal to negative four. So these two guys, which would be in the position of being the y-intercept, they cannot be equal to each other. So I'm just gonna go ahead and solve it as if it were equal, and then that'll tell us what number we're not able to have. So I'm gonna multiply both sides here by negative two over three, and we get c equals eight over three. So remember, we were judging what was not gonna be allowed. So this cannot be the case. So now we know C cannot equal eight over three. So C can be any number except what? Eight over three. And what's the value of A? 16.